Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Hello everyone, we welcome you to our show, Beauty From Within with Menchu and Friends. My name is Menchu. And I'm Mili. And on today's program, we will be talking about physiotherapy. And some of us may wonder, what is physiotherapy? Well, today we have invited a very expert of this particular field, and he is a physiotherapist. And a physiotherapist are the ones that help manage patients with their pain, and they also manage people, help people uh, prevent injuries. diseases. Yes, injuries, disabilities, and illnesses. Yes, so and they can help you, uh, educate you, what you should do better, you're having back ache, you know those consistent pains. Right. that you don't know anything about. Right. And that's why we are here at Lamalo Physiotherapy located in Aguro and it is at the surgery. Yes. So please let us welcome our guest to our show, Dr. Hans. Hi. Good morning. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. You're yes, welcome. you're welcome to our show. Can you please look at the camera and say hi to our viewers? Hello, good morning. My name is Hans and uh, as these people told, I'm a physiotherapist working here in my practice. What does a physiotherapist do? Uh, well, as the name says, we try to help the body. Um, so people usually come with bodily symptoms, but they are, might be related to many other influences from the outside or from the inside the body, which we try to detect, eliminate them, and help the disabled body to get better. Okay. Physio means the body, therapy means the help. It is uh, actually derived from, from Greek. Okay. And that's the original meaning. Okay. So, how, when did it begin, this kind of treatment? Um, the treatment itself, uh, the practices of physiotherapy or the techniques, they are actually developed some thousand years ago. We know of deep tissue massages, we know of bone setting that reaches as far as from ancient Egypt and Greece. But we have the modern forms, and I think the big difference is now that science <coughs> gives evidence uh, how come does it, what, that, that it helps and in what form does it help. It gives the explanation about what people knew already some 2,000, 3,000 years ago. Mm. And how long have you been doing this work? Um, I graduated in 1994, and since then I'm practicing. Mm -hmm. I was working for a long time in Europe, in Switzerland and Germany, okay. and then I moved to Uganda, and since uh, 2013 I'm working here, and uh, the practice was established in 2014. Wow, okay. Wow, that's amazing. What are the kind of people who need physiotherapy? Oh, that is a whole range of, um, I would say you could bring it down to orthopedic problems or neurological problems. These are the two big um, areas of physiotherapy. For example, the neuro neurological would mean um, a stroke. Um, the orthopedic one can be all kind of any pain that is related to your orthopedic system and most often it can be uh, triggered by movements, for example, like low back ache that most of us know all too well, and any other kind of orthopedic problem, certainly. I see. Now, um, I came from the Philippines and we call uh, this kind of treatment physical therapy. Yes. And in the US, we call it chiropractic treatment. Yes. And in Uganda, they call it physiotherapy. Yes. Is there any difference with these uh, terms? Um, it's mainly the wording when it's about physical therapy and physiotherapy. Physio, I think that's more in the European, Anglican countries, Anglo-Saxon countries, uh, while physical therapy is used in the US mainly. Okay. When you speak about chiropractic, that is a form of manipulation of joints, which is a special education concentrated on that. Okay. We use it as well, but then we call it manual therapy. Manual therapy which is a spe uh, specialization in the physiotherapy. You do it as a postgraduate course, um, and then you have many others that have specialized, like massage therapists who use deep tissue, etc. Okay. Oh, so that means manual therapy is under phys physiotherapy? Yes. I would say 95% of the manual therapists, uh, they have done physiotherapy before, but it's also open, for example, to doctors. Some few doctors have also taken a course in manual therapy, particularly when they're orthopedic doctors, okay. to analyze and help the patient on the same place. Okay. 
Now, there are so many uh, of our viewers that doesn't have any idea what is physiotherapy. But maybe if you can give them, what are the benefits of this treatment? Well, the benefits is to improve your function, your physical function. Many are limited in, uh, for example, when they have back pain, they cannot mm -hmm. properly sport, they cannot joke, they cannot swim, they cannot sit too many hours in the office, which is rather limiting. Mm -hmm. um, and so are the ones with the headaches and other mm -hmm. things that disturb them on their body. And the benefit is to get rid of the problem. That is, and that is a clear, a clear line that we draw. Physiotherapy is done to help. We do not just endlessly compensate things and treat and treat. It must help. We must find uh, the origin of the problem, eliminate the disturbing factors, and treat uh, the limits. Can someone come to the physiotherapy without an approval, or do they have to be recommended? Well, in Uganda, you can come yourself, okay. self-referred. Uh -huh. um, however, if you want to be compensated by your insurance, you better ask them, them for the, the conditions. Some require a referral letter from the doctor, other they just say you are free to go, you know yourself best where you get uh, the help from. Okay. But what is the difference with uh, physiotherapy and manual therapy? Well, that is a very often asked one. All my patients ask the same. Um, I would say physiotherapy is uh, looking at diseases and problems more locally. For example, if you have a muscle sprain, a muscle strain, that is what you treat locally. You treat the muscle. But when you have more complicated chronic diseases like low back ache or other things that you cannot get rid of, then the manual therapist tries to assess in detail. For example, your nerve, mobili your nerve mobility, um, joint li or limited joints and influencing factors. So often you find uh, the spine, the culprit of a tennis arm, for example, so you rather treat the spine than the tennis arm. And then you often also see that it helps in a, in a much shorter way because you are closer to the, what we call, cause of the cause of your problem. Mm. Wow. Well, doctor, for the time you've been working on patients here in Uganda, what are some of the common fears that you discovered uh, within the patients who come to see you? Ooh, the fears. I think people don't like to talk so much about them, but what generally I hear, that is that they say, they, they feel they have to follow the procedure, you know? Like when you go to a doctor, he prescribes the medicine and you just have to take it. Mm -hmm. So you somehow have to surrender yourself, which nobody likes. Whether you go to the dentist or to the doctor, it's always the same. You feel you have to expose yourself. Um, I think those are the fears. Maybe also that the pain could, imp could uh, become more than they come with, so the side effects, the consequences, and that they don't know you in first instance, yeah. which I hope to break through with this as well. Okay. Well, the, when someone comes for a physiotherapy session, let's say they have a problem in their back, they have to undress so you can look for the problem? Not necessarily. The cultures are very different, so for example, when you go to Australia, you will hardly ever have to undress. It's against the culture there. Also in China, it is completely uncommon to undress. The Chinese always will treat above, and so do I for the ones who require that. Um, and that is just one part of, but the general policy is that everything is done in uh, in conclusion with the, with the patient himself or herself, that they agree to it. So if somebody, for example, I have also people from the Muslim community, mm -hmm. and women there will never agree to that, and they don't have to. I can easily treat you unless you come maybe with a winter coat. Then it can, it can become difficult. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, uh, people can always tell their limits that they have, and I don't question that, it's just accepted. I'm here to help the people, and uh, there are many ways, as we say, that lead to Rome. Okay, well, this is a very interesting profession. What about to our viewers, like our young viewers that are interested to become a physiotherapist? Yeah. What are the things they need to, to, to do in order to become a physiotherapist? Yes, what kind of courses, yeah. Do you need to be passionate in this area? Do you need to enjoy, you know, what you're doing? 
Yes, I think so. I mean, that is generally true for, I think, every profession. You should do what you love and you should love mm. what you do. That helps mm. a lot to, to be passionate and you need this passion to, to go through. Yeah. Uh, many students complain about uh, the many work hours they have in a week, the study hours, uh, because anatomy, pathology and all these subjects uh, is a big, big workload. And then still, uh, we were told by our lecturers that in fact, after four years of education to gain your bachelor, you are just able to swim, but not really swim fast or swim very well. So it's a lifelong process of learning and you must really speak, stay self-critical about your limitations. You must uh, do postgraduate education regularly, uh, daily or weekly go into the internet and read new things about the developments there. Profession. Well, I was very interested uh, in, in our human existence, in medicine, medical things, certainly also in fitness and sport. Mm -hmm. uh, but then also I had my own problems, which I could solve by increasing the knowledge that I had about the physiotherapy and all what is around it. I mean, we are influenced mainly by our environment, yeah. that is uh, the climate, for example. Mm -hmm. In these days also, for example, the air condition. Mm -hmm. It is food, not to forget. Uh, the food causes a lot of irritation or can cause a lot of irritation of uh, the spine, the joints. We know all about gout and arthritis, which we know exactly can come from food. Uh, there is the workload and other ergonomical things uh, that we have to take into consideration. Mm. Now it's interesting, you've mentioned about food, that food itself can cause pain. Now what are the examples of foods that you're talking about? Um, it has actually, a, it is a twofold. The one thing is a disturbed metabolism. For example, if you cannot digest pork very well, but you have it daily, mm -hmm. and all these acids, they, they settle in your joints which causes arthritis. So you have to distinct in the anamnesis with the patient and the assessment, what does this person eat? Could it be a possible influence? The same with gout. And then you can simply recommend the people uh, to avoid certain foods and see whether it brings an improvement. Okay. Certainly in some cases it is necessary uh, to refer them to a doctor for that, mm -hmm. to exactly diagnose. But in some cases you can't because the tests are not there. Mm -hmm. And you know, in these days, uh, allergies, intolerance, sensitivity, they are used interchangeably. The lines are no longer so clear and often the best self-help and the fastest and the cheapest is to try out. Mm -hmm. You know, you mentioned several things that can affect a person's physical, you know, abilities. And you mentioned food, you also mentioned the environment, the air conditioner. Yes. How, how does that affect? Yes, yes, yes. And I have quite some patients that are victims of air condition, as I would say. Um, it is going like this. Um, from our biology, like 500 years ago, we never had a fast change in temperature or in the climate. And climate is more than temperature. It's the moisture and uh, an artificially cooled down air is it's still artificial and not good for our lungs. It, has a, it can have a heavy impact on our lungs, so the lungs are reacting. Mm -hmm. They have to warm up this air to our body temperature. So when you come from 35 degrees in Kampala outside to your office of 18 degrees in the, in the worst case, mm -hmm. that is a huge step in a short time. And your autonomous nerve system is not prepared for this. So it will react, let's say, with a shock reaction. And this shock reaction is not only uh, affecting our lungs, but also the whole segment of these nerves. And to this segment belongs the skin, the muscles and the joints. So some people wake up the next morning and they have, they have a blocked neck, they have neck ache, they have headaches. And the simple cause can be the use of air condition. Wow, this is interesting. We're about to take a short break, but really remind our viewers well, about I the game that we're going to have in the show. That's true. Yes. Well, if you are watching this show or you know someone who you think will need this physiotherapy, there is your chance right here. Yes. We are going to be asking you a question at the end of this show, and when you get that question correct on our Facebook page, well, you will be just the lucky winner for a free physiotherapy session with Dr. Hans here at Lamaro Physiotherapy 
in the guru. So stick around and ask the question right, then you can leave this session. Yes, so don't go away, we'll be right back. Welcome back to our show. You are watching Beauty From Within with Menchu and Friends. And we've been talking about physiotherapy and we are here with Dr. Hans. And he's going to be giving us advice on how to live a healthy lifestyle. So let's get back to Dr. Hans. Welcome back, Dr. Hans. Thank you. Let's talk more about uh, the services that you offered in this office. What services do you uh, provide? Well, uh, as a physiotherapist, uh, it is physiotherapy in general, and I'm specialized in manual therapy, and I also have a license for sport physiotherapy. Okay. Okay. Does that mean you also work on sports in field? Yes, if required, but most often this is more of a hobby because people cannot afford to have a physio every hour when they train. But when there are problems, I also do, I go to the field to see where is the problem when the, when the, when the patient or when the sporter is running or exercising something and has problems with it. Physiotherapy is very affordable and it's so needed by everyone. Well, while we are here with Dr. Hans, we want you to know that there is a prize for you to win. If you only answer the question, we're going to be giving you and that prize you will be getting a free massage. Oh, I would love that. Yes. Only that you can't Yes, I it. can't. <laughs> There's yeah. a restriction applied That's to true. this game. And even our camera crew can all win it. Mm -hmm. But if you are watching us and you want to have a free massage, just go on our Facebook page. We are going to give you a question. Go there, be the first to give us the right answer. Then you will be our lucky winner. Well, Dr. Hans, how many times should a person um, exercise their bodies to stay fit? Uh, recent research has found out that 30 minutes of daily exercise is enough mm -hmm. to avoid the problems that come with a sedentary lifestyle, which is overweight, high blood pressure, and all the risks coming with uh, the diseases following. So, so when you say, what about those people that exercise more than 30 minutes? That has additional benefits. Okay. There is also an upper line, but hardly anybody reaches that one. Uh, I would say the, the lowest limit is 30 minutes, and it can be accumulated. That means you can build it in your daily routine, like using the stairs instead of the elevator, running to your car instead of walking very slow, or going to the next shopping center by a bicycle with, uh, instead of taking your car. Even if it's 10 minutes, that has additional benefits for sedent formally sedentary people. Okay. So that means a person should make sure they exercise their bodies physically at least 30 minutes a day yes. for them to stay. Yes, and that's best if they do it five or six days a week. Wow. Okay. Sorry. Well, you had a question about food yes. because you wanted to know more because we love eating. Yes. You know? So the best, Everybody. The, the best we know about what not to do while we enjoy our eating, yeah. the better for us. Yes. So are there some things that a, a person can look out for, for them to know that what I'm eating could actually be the, the thing that is the causing, causing pain, pain in my body? Well, it goes as far as that, but to start with the, with the better side of food, you should eat regularly. It is completely wrong, as it was done a lot of times in the 70s, I think, that people went on the zero diet. That is, they lived from juice alone, and with that you only burn muscle mass, mm -hmm. which should burn your calories instead. So you digest your own muscles, so that's a no-go. First of all, be invited to eat regularly and healthy. Mm -hmm. Certainly you should avoid to eat fat, or not too much fat of it, but on the other side, don't avoid all the fat. You need the fats, and uh, one thing is, if you make your body feel hungry, your body will accumulate more fat because it thinks from the old times, that's the old brain setting, there is not enough food around, we must save. Like money on the bank, you build up more fat under your skin and between your organs, which is not a favorite thing. So the best thing to stay lean or to become lean is eating healthy and regularly. Okay, so don't starve yourself. Eat, no. eat healthy and yes. healthy that and is number one. balanced diet. That's just yes. Yeah, so another question, doctor. How can an individual help themselves by pre preventing pain? 
In my daily practice, I see that many people these days have health problems, metabolic problems, which is not only uh, found in uh, how, how much fat they build up or such a thing. I think that's a minor issue, but it is colon problems. And the colon seems to send impulses to the brain when it's not very well and alters the muscle tension around our stomach. Uh, an inflamed colon does not like pressure. And that can lead to a hypertension of the back muscle plus a hypotension of the stomach muscle, which I think from a personal experience with patients is one reason why so many men do not develop a six pack. They can't. Mm. They first have to get their colon better before their muscle, uh, before the brain allows the muscles to, to receive more electricity for growth. Mm. And that is also uh, in many times the cause that I find in my practice for backache. Now you talk about colon. What, what do you do with the colon then? Um, the first step here in Africa is self-help. You, I, I try to sensitize people or to become sensitive for what they eat, that they closely observe when they have times with more backache and less backache, what have they eaten the day before. And this is often enough to help the people. I lately had a patient who said, I found out it's hot spice. Whenever I eat a hot spice, I get backache. Whenever I leave the hot spice, my backache is out. So that is as simple as that. That is part of my work to eliminate the disturbing factors in your daily life, to identify them. Now in Europe, you might go to a very expensive and long during testing, but here in Africa, this is not, it's not given. We have no laboratories for that yet here for all and everything. So the fastest and the best is the, the self-tests and become sensitive. Okay. Well, we only have a few minutes left, but go ahead, Millie, and tell them the question. Well, for, game. well for our game, for today's winner, who will win a free massage from Dr. Hands, you only have to go on our Facebook page and tell us how long how, mean, how long should a person exercise their physical body in a day for them to stay healthy? Just give us the answer to that. We told you the answer through the show, so if you were watching, you go tell us. Well, we also need to remind you that Dr. Hands can come to your office if you are a business owner and you, your employees are getting sick every now and then, or you just want them to stay healthy. Well, he can hold these seminars, he can come to your place, address the issues that need to be worked on, like what kind of chairs should work for what, uh, what kind of desks should uh, the employees work for, and recommend other things that can help your employees stay fit and do a good job at your workplace. Yeah. Well, also our makeup has been done by Parama Beauty Parlor. So if you like what you see, just go to Parama opposite Bank of Uganda Kampala Road. Parama, timeless African beauty. That's right. So we hope that you enjoy watching this program and you have learned a lot from Dr. Hans. Dr. Hans, thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you for eat. coming. Yeah, even me and I have learned a lot. That's true. Yeah. I'm learning a lot. Subject. I love yes. to eat, but yes. I have to watch it. Right. So Don't we forget hope. to visit our yes. Facebook page. Mm -hmm. It's running across. And also, if you miss the show, go to our YouTube channel and you'll be able to watch the show. Yes, and I hope that you enjoy this program. We want to see you again next week. Mm -hmm. And don't forget that Jesus loves you and we, we do too. Bye-bye.